Well, hello, hello there. there. It's been a while since my last video, and since then, you've probably heard just a lot about Project Cambria, MetaQuest Pro, whatever they're gonna name it, but the truth of this headset is maybe less spectacular than some headlines make it out to be, but the importance of it to VR and XR I think is actually understated, and this video may surprise you. The MetaQuest Pro is more than the sum of its parts. It's more than the supposed spec sheet. It is more than the possible $1,500 price tag. It is 100% more than the sum of its parts, and in fact, if the MetaQuest Pro succeeds or fails, and success being, of course, what they say on social media, it really can't fail because it's already provided one of the biggest dubs to the XR community in what it is providing, and that's what we're gonna be talking about today. This is a feel-good video. This is borderline educational, so crack a beer, listen if you want. You're gonna see some familiar faces, and that starts with a man, the myth, the man with the spy family drip. Brad, I hear you have something to say. Hi, I'm Brad, and I think this device will be beneficial to all of us. Just maybe not right away. I think higher end hardware will allow Oculus or Meta, oh God, I still call them Oculus, to actually bring their research teams in closer to the productization teams because they spend billions per year on research and a lot of that cannot make it into a lower, cheaper device as easily as it can into a higher end expensive device. And I think by creating this new line, we'll be able to solve all the problems that hardware has, mostly for the retention and the comfort values. There's a lot more to go on, but I only have 30 seconds. Yeah, and you went 10 seconds over, Brad. What the? But he's right. You've probably heard the phrase, the race to the bottom, where headset costs are getting cheaper and cheaper, or were, with that race to that minimum viable product that was focusing on the cost over possible functions. But I think that's going to be changing because the era of high-end standalone headsets, well, it's already here. The gamble of adding all this kind of reminds me of the story of Roger Bannister and the 4-Minute Mile. Breaking this time, running the mile in under four minutes, was myth. It was impossible. But on May 6, 1964, Roger finished a mile with a time of three minutes, 59 and four tenths of a second. What was impossible became possible. And even Roger's time was then beat just 46 days later. And these records started being beat even faster and faster. Now, Meta may be Roger Bannister here. They may be first to market with a high-end standalone VR headset. But the winds of change are hard to stop, and when one high-end standalone headset comes, many more will follow, which we'll be talking about in future videos. But this is change that cannot be stopped, and I'm glad someone, it was Meta, took the step. We are going in the right direction. But I also have Luna hanging out ready to talk because Luna, you are excited about something. Hi, I'm Luna, and a lot of what makes the Quest Pro controllers interesting to me is that they're the first dedicated VR input device, really, right? The Valve Knuckles were a pretty good attempt at just trying to have a complete departure of traditional game controllers and TV remotes, but these are really a step above that. They have their own chips, they have their own inside out tracking, they have their own potential. Um, 3D haptics and force feedback triggers, and even they may go as far as to having something like a pin pressure sensitivity for doing 3D modeling and art. So I think they're going to be a huge leap in terms of how we view VR, using controllers more like tools than just tool things to play games. It's very interesting, isn't it? We have tons of VR accessories. We have uh, VR treadmills. We have haptic vests. We have basic uh, brain computer interfaces, and we even have this thing. I, you know, whatever that is. But, have you noticed something that hasn't changed in a while? According to Aristotle's Hierarchy of Senses, he did propose in the 4th century BC, maybe something VR is going to get back on track and focusing on our senses. He ranks sight as number one, something VR has improved greatly on since inception. Next is hearing, and while onboard audio is still lacking on many devices, there's plenty of accessories and ways that absolutely nail audio. Now, smell and taste, they were next, and well, yeah, I think VR is obviously behind those, but I also see these more as survival senses at the moment. But that, that leaves us with touch. For all the accessories that we have out there, for every VR accessory video I see promising immersion, have you noticed what hasn't changed? I have. That's those controllers. Controllers, especially, we'll talk about meta controllers or Oculus controllers in the past, have really not changed dramatically too much uh, even since the CV-1. They are still controllers meant to be used as buttons, as conduits to what we need to do in video games. And you know what? We need to focus 
more on our hands, more on touching that virtual grass. And I agree, Luna. I think focusing on controllers and bringing them into the next generation, again, the winds of change don't stop. And this is dramatically going to impact the experiences that we can have in VR. But Gregory, over in Virtual Dreamers, you have something to say. It seems that you're very passionate about a couple things. Eye tracking and facial tracking, in my opinion, will be the biggest, I didn't know how much I needed it till I got it, features that social VR has ever seen. From enabling developers like me to rapidly create high quality facial animations, VTubers to express their emotions with more detail than ever, or our avatars and social apps to convey our emotions more clearly, I genuinely think that the sooner we can get these features to become standard across all VR hardware, the sooner we'll actually see the metaverse start to evolve and our enjoyment of VR experiences take the next step along the way. I think you nailed it. I think you absolutely nailed it with this segment that you don't know what you're missing until you've tried it or until you have it. That matters a lot in our life. But I know you said it so perfectly, but humor me and let me opine a little bit on your thoughts. The uncanny valley is a term that you may have heard before. It's used to describe the relationship between the human-like appearance of, say, a VR avatar and the emotional response it evokes. In this phenomena, people feel a sense of unease, or really, pure revulsion in response to VR avatars that are highly realistic. Now, our realistic, realistic avatars that we have now, well, they border immensely on the uncanny valley. But you add face tracking, lip tracking, eye tracking, all these things, well, your death stare that you're giving me in VR chat, it becomes all the more real. And I know this might be an unpopular opinion to some, something gaming is the cornerstone of XR, and while it very may well be, and will be the driver of money and monetary resources for a long time to come, if it's not social first, or if social aspects aren't baked into it, I don't see success for that. And eye tracking and face tracking and all these sensors, they just get us a little closer to that and beating this uncanny valley. Those are just my thoughts on that. Now, Devin is also waiting, uh, speaking to me through pass through and has something to say about it. I think one of the most important things coming with Project Cambria would have to be the high quality color pass through. Being able to see your environment more clearly, allowing it to feel more natural, along with the benefits of virtual augmentation, really allows XR as a whole to take one step closer into being integrated into our day-to-day -day lives. Especially as headsets get lighter and better, there's a real possibility that XR hardware could become as useful as our smartphones. Not only that, but the truly immersive experiences you can have while in color pass through, being able to see yourself and your augmented reality really is a game changer for gaming and business as a whole. And if more companies focus on that, I really think a lot of industries as a whole can revolutionize this tech. Look, I can't agree more, and I could also uh, give my opinions on this, but this video, I think, is getting a little bit on the longer side. So, Mateo311, can you just wrap this up? Because I know you are always thinking future forward and bigger picture. We are entering into new territory. Like if you've never used the VR before, you don't know what it's like until you try it. And Cambria is gonna do that for AR. We have no idea what we're stepping into. This might blow our minds. It might set off, you know, whole new experiences that we just didn't think to make. So that's why I'm excited. I wanna get real with everyone real quick. I don't think Project Cambria or the MetaQuest Pro is going to succeed by the standards of a $1,500 XR device that is better than the $300, now $400 uh, MetaQuest 2 that's out there. Uh, success is relative though, and that's the purpose of this video, is to be more optimistic, to realize that it is not the sum of the parts that matter, but it's the parts inside the headset that matter. We are now moving to high-end standalone VR, high-end standalone XR, AR with color pass-through now becomes more of a possibility. If it wasn't a possibility already before, it is now more tangible to someone. Yes, it's an enterprise unit, maybe $1,500, it's a lot of money, but it's more tangible. It is more usable and has other applications. Headsets are becoming less about immersing yourself away from the world and more about the ability to do anything all in one lightweight unit. That's amazing. I'd like to get more collaborative in the future for videos, be more optimistic like this, be more, there's just more to do in VR than ever before and I've got my passion back. I got a little nervous, stopped making videos for a while because I did go outside and touch some virtual grass or excuse me, some real grass. Uh, but the confidence of making videos I think is coming back. I'm excited. 
And I hope this video entertained you, uh, informed you, and made you understand why Meta Pro, MetaQuest Pro, is that what we're calling it? MetaQuest Pro or Project Cambria is absolutely one of the most important things that happened to XR in a very long time. And not just because it's an awesome headset, but for really what it does moving forward. It's more than the sum of its parts because it is the parts itself that matter. I'm Eric for President. Please follow me. See you next time. Peace.